Previously, in What If Black Frieza Confronted Beast Gohan, Frieza committed a felony unlike anything he's ever done or even tried to do before. He killed Liquor, the god of destruction of Universe 8, and just like that, the whole status quo that's been preserved for hundreds of millions of years has finally collapsed. I mean, going to a completely different universe out of your jurisdiction and killing the god of destruction, that's beyond a universal offense, and Frieza is now the enemy of all 12 of them. So what is he gonna do now? Well, I guess we'll just have to hop right in and see. For the time being, the authorities of Universe 5 take control of Universe 8 to prevent the multiversal equilibrium from collapsing even further. Meanwhile, Beerus, Whis, and the Supreme Kai are summoned by the Grand Priest. How the hell did someone like Frieza manage to escape Universe 7 and enter Universe 8 when first of all, the two aren't even connected? It should've taken him a really long time to get there. Universes 7 and 8 are in different pairs altogether, and so, in order to break it down, the Grand Priest is gonna start by questioning the authorities of Universe 7. Definitely be sure to go check out the previous chapter of this what if, I'll be sure to have it linked down below in the comments. And if you do really enjoy Dragon Ball content like this, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel as over 80% of you guys watching right now aren't subscribed somehow. We're trying to hit that 1 mil real soon guys, so let's get it. Let's be honest, Frieza is somewhere completely out of his own jurisdiction, and he knows he messed up, but he also knows that if he didn't fight, he would have just been erased by the God of Destruction, and so he has no particular reservations about what happened. Alright, first let's get out of here, I guess, Frieza says. He immediately exits Planet Emu's orbit and then his solar system. The objective now was to backtrack and try to find the wormhole that brought him here in the first place. And this definitely seemed like the right decision at the time because just 5 or so minutes after Frieza leaves the planet, the God of Destruction Arak shows up with his angel. Uh, looks like we're too late. Where do you think he went, Arak says. Excuse me, Lord Arak, but are you sure about this? Shouldn't we wait until actual orders from the Grand Priest? Besides, if Frieza was able to kill Lord Liquor, he may do the same to you, Cocktail states. You sound like you have no faith in me, Arak replies. I'm afraid, yes. I'm a pragmatist after all, the angel replies. Frieza, on the other hand, in the meantime, is on the lookout for the Kage tribe. That's where things went south, so maybe if he returns there, he can somehow find his way back. But that's not all. He was forced into a fight with Liquor because he allegedly wiped out one of the oldest tribes in the known multiverse, the Kage tribe. Of course, if you guys remember, Frieza had no idea what he was talking about as he had nothing to do with this. I mean, he was barely even on the planet for a couple of minutes. But then again now, trying to find a single planet in a different universe, all the while being a wanted man, it just doesn't really sound probable, does it? And Frieza knows this. He knows that every single odd is stacked against him now, but still, he feels surprisingly informed somehow. Going back to planet Earth, a shadow would emerge on the same exact spot as where Gohan blasted Frieza away at. It was something subtle and barely noticeable, but over the course of the next 12 hours, this shadow would gradually transform into an actual humanoid figure who was somewhat capable of speech. After somewhat fully forming, he takes off and starts looking for something. Surprisingly, despite the fact that people like Piccolo and Gohan are on the planet, no one notices that an alien presence or whatever was now roaming their skies. Speaking of those guys, what were the two of them up to now? Well, Gohan and Piccolo were actually busy training in Siberia to help Gohan learn how to better use the Beast Transformation, and as they were doing so, Piccolo would slip on a Dragon Ball underneath. They laugh and then Gohan tosses the Dragon Ball over with the rest of their belongings. Over in the God Realm, the Grand Priest welcomes Beerus and the others to Zeno's palace, but before he could say another word, Beerus gets down on his knees and starts apologizing profusely. Beerus even takes it a step further, saying that he will personally destroy Frieza himself, as well as help in choosing a destroyer for Universe 8. Calm down, Lord Beerus. Just let Father talk, Whis says. This is when the Grand Priest would finally speak up. Honestly, this isn't about Frieza. It's about Son Gohan. What? Whis, Beerus, and Shin are all left stunned. While yes, Frieza may have created this current mess, Gohan has a power that can collapse the fabric of reality itself, and I don't think I need to explain to you three how dangerous that can be. I see, no problem, we will get rid of Son Gohan, Beerus says, but the Grand Prix stops him. No, just teach him how to use his power properly. He must not be allowed to go berserk or lose control as long as he's able to use that transformation. Although, I will leave you with this. 
If the young man is unable to learn or control that power, feel free to end him as you please, the Grand Priest says, and then he even continues further. Also, since you were so excited to take responsibility for what Frieza did, I guess I have no problems leaving that up to you too. Beerus just gulps and nods in agreement. No more naps for a good while now. They all leave Zeno's palace and return to planet Beerus. This is when they would have to break the news to Goku and Vegeta about what the Grand Priest had told them. Aw oh, man, I mean, it's Gohan, I'm sure he'll figure out that power in no time, Goku says. And even Vegeta would agree, saying, seriously, it's not that deep. I know that, you idiots. Just make sure he learns or I'll have to destroy him just like how I'm going to destroy Frieza, Beerus declares. So it looks like, and of course we should have seen this coming, that Beerus is just going to delegate Beast Gohan's training to Goku and Vegeta. He tells Goku to go ahead and bring Gohan to planet Beerus and start training him while he himself leaves for Universe 8 with Whis. And it's so in character for Goku to be genuinely upset that he couldn't go with Beerus and Whis because he wants to fight Black Frieza again as well. Kakarot, be honest. Do you think Frieza may have already surpassed Lord Beerus? Vegeta asks. I don't know. Why ask? Goku replies. Well, he did kill another destroyer, and unlike Universe 7, Universe 8 was exempt from participating in the Tournament of Power. What if their destroyer was stronger than Lord Beerus? Vegeta adds. Mm, now that you mention this, I actually want to see the both of them fight. Should we just follow them, Goku says? And how are we going to do that without Whis? Use the Dragon Balls or something stupid, Vegeta says? I, you, you know what? That might not be a bad idea. The dragon can at least show us the battle, Goku laughs. The two of them round up Broly, who even I forgot was still hanging around here, and then they all instant transmission back to Earth. The search for the Dragon Balls begins, but right as they take the first look at the radar, they notice something unusual. Four of the Dragon Balls are already together, and they're moving. Yes, yeah, someone's already out there gathering them, Vegeta says. However, when Goku and Vegeta fly to that exact point on the radar, they realize that it's just an empty, mountainous region. Now, the problem with that is that they can't sense any individual in this area. Maybe it just happens to have something to do with that shadow from before. The boys take a few minutes to look around, but they eventually spot an adult humanoid looking figure carrying all four of those Dragon Balls. Again, they can't sense anything about the guy. They can only see him with their own eyes. Vegeta shoots an energy blast at him, but Goku instantly appears before the guy and stops it from hitting him, saying, that's not really cool, Vegeta, so now we got the good cop, bad cop thing going on. Come on, you can't be that naive, look. The guy didn't even flinch. That's not a human and we have no idea why he's gathering the Dragon Balls, Vegeta replies. Relax, please. I'm not here to pick a fight. I just need the Dragon Balls to reunite with my people, the Shadow says. Goku and Vegeta look at each other momentarily with confusion, but they didn't sense any threat from this guy, so they just shrug their shoulders. Alright, so if we help you with the last three Dragon Balls, can you spare us a wish, Goku asks. Shadow gives them a thumbs up. The three of them then go out and find the other two Dragon Balls, and finally for the seventh one, they gotta go all the way to where Piccolo and Gohan are training. What's up, Dad? Uh, who's that with you, Gohan asks, but the Shadow himself tells the same story about how he just wants to reunite with his people and thought the Dragon Balls would be a good idea after getting information from a few nomadic tribes. So Gohan and Piccolo hand over the Dragon Ball, and the next thing we know, Shinron has been summoned. Vegeta would step up and ask Shinron to show them the battle between Beerus and Frieza that should be taking place at this very moment. There is no such battle, Shinron states. Whatever, no problem. Vegeta then asks the dragon to just show them both Beerus and Frieza on two different screens and although Shinron easily shows them Beerus who was conversing with Arak on planet Emu, for some reason Shinron was unable to pinpoint Frieza. What? What does that even mean, Vegeta asks? But Shinron genuinely had no clue on Frieza's whereabouts. Whatever, the Shadow politely asks them if he can go ahead with his wish now, and sure, why not? But the Shadow speaks in a foreign language that none of them are familiar with. He asks something and then disappears with the dragon itself. Meanwhile, let's hop back over and see what old Frieza was up to. He had somehow managed to find the planet of the Kage tribe, and it looks like Liquor wasn't kidding when he said that this ancient tribe was wiped out after Frieza came to this universe. But Frieza notices something. Unlike the first time he set foot on this planet, he now feels at home. Not only that, but now Frieza can instinctively tell where he can find that wormhole that should take him back to Universe 7. 
Frieza drops everything, acting immediately and proceeds to the wormhole and with that, once again Frieza would be back home in Universe 7. While Beerus was still chatting with The Rock on who to nominate as the next destroyer of Universe 8. Well, well, what now? Even after returning back, I still feel different, Frieza says. He was planning on going back to the headquarters, but Frieza would notice that there was something sus about the uninhabited planet beside him. Out of just pure curiosity, he destroys it with a simple attack, but what he sees next is something he simply could never have foreseen. The surface of the planet crumbles apart and out comes a shiny, sparkly Super Dragon Ball. What kind of streak is this? How lucky can you be? This dude just killed a god of destruction and a Super Dragon Ball just landed in his lap. Frieza grins and starts laughing hysterically. Of course, yes, why didn't I think of this? An almighty dragon beyond those produced by the other Dragon Balls with the power to grant any wish in existence. Why did I never think of this prior? I'll gather the Super Dragon Balls and destroy the status quo myself, he declares. Little did Frieza know, however, that even after he himself stopped laughing, his shadow was still laughing. What exactly is going on here? Why was Shenron unable to locate Frieza in the first place, and how was Frieza able to not only find his way back himself, but also notice the presence of a Super Dragon Ball? Of course, back on Earth, Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, and Piccolo are also confused about how their dragon was taken away from them. Apparently, Dende is gone as well. It's the shadows. And it wasn't just one or two of them. There were hundreds or maybe even thousands of them who invaded Universes 6 and 7 thanks to the wormhole that Gohan's power created. And therein lies the fear that the Grand Priest had about this strength. Their strength lies in immediately gathering and understanding all sorts of information and right now, they've gathered as many as four Super Dragon Balls. Their goal is to give their species a proper physical form because they feel as if they can be the strongest if only they had actual bodies. And while Frieza may realize it or not, a shadow has been attached to him as well ever since he first stepped foot on their planet. Everything is a mess right now, especially because hardly anyone has realized what's going on how the Super Dragon Balls are being gathered in real time behind everyone's back. Frieza senses another Super Dragon Ball in a nearby galaxy. He was about to take off when that shadow from before appears in front of him, along with Shenron. Without even thinking about it, Frieza plunges forward, exterminates the shadowy figure using a Hakai, and then faces towards Shenron. In this story, within the next 24 hours, Frieza will ask Super Shenron to fulfill his wish. His tyrannical wish of absolute unhinged anarchy across the entire multiverse may be about to come true.